Alright the ladies and gentlemen, John Sweepy here, and after some decision and a bit of a delay, it's finally time to resume the second Dark Alliance game. And these birds look very hungry. Back, birds, you will not have my flesh. Looks like these birds are not only keen on picking on dead travellers, but living ones too. Plastic things. Well, I guess where they are, ravens, crows, vultures. It seems that nothing in this place is friendly. Most of the time in games, birds like this would just fly away when the player went near them, but not so here. Hmm, it must be one of the dead troop of caravanners that Kyo was talking about earlier. So, anyways. Thank you all for your comments in the last part about what skills to pick. I've compiled them all together and I'm sort of making some choices. Although it seems like, like someone mentioned, um... Who was it now that mentioned about it? It was Alex the Average Kid. Yeah, Alex the Average Kid mentioned that you pretty much get more than enough points to spec whatever the heck you want. And I would agree with that because it seems like a lot of the skills, at least early on, are low cost, so we shouldn't have any 22 cost skills, well, at least not un not until the, the highest rank anyway. And one of the skills that a lot of people were particularly keen on seeing, including Katang, Mateo, and Walter Cuppens, and Antonio XII mentioned, was Animate the Dead, which summons an ally. So we're going to put a single point in that. And also it will cost us two for the next one. So now we will have to put this somewhere, let's see, and then the dead, we'll put that to square, oh, uh, hey, there we go, alright, so it looks like now we'll be able to summon an ally, and it just it doesn't seem to be a unlimited, doesn't seem to be a time limit, so let's go summon our new friend, immediately, alright, oh, wow, that takes a lot of matter, so there he is, our new ally, Mr. Skeleton. Maybe we can call him Mr. Bones or something. So this is the Trollbark Forest. I don't know what to expect from this point onwards. Apart from these pesky archers. Time to do some draining, me thinks. Excellent! My skeleton can be my frontline offense while I cast draining spells in the back. <laughs> Brilliant. It probably cost a lot of mana to do this over the long run. Hmm, my skeleton friend seems quite durable, which is good. Good start. So, as from this point on, I have no idea what's going to happen in this playthrough. I mean, this is the furthest I ever got. I saw these archers and I stopped the play my test playthrough to make sure I was cool with the game. And now I have no idea what's going to happen from now on, so... Whatever happens is a big surprise, but what I'm apparently expected to see, according to several comments, Antonio X Antonio X13 mentions that I should apparently expect to see some more familiar faces in the game at some point. We got a weapon here. Oh, it's not great, unfortunately. We're not really weapon or armor spec right now, so it's just cloth cloths for us. Whoa! Looks like my skeleton friend is quite apt at teleporting. Ooh, I'm slow through that. I guess we'll be trying to avoid that as much as possible. <coughs> so, I think no one picked up on it, but I'm pretty convinced that that Kira was the same as we saw earlier. Uh, in the thing, uh, Baldur's Gate 1. Looks like my skeleton friend here really can tank quite nicely. Oh, wow. We're rolled up already? That was fast. Oh, cool. The shield also applies to the skeleton ally. That's handy. Alright, so we can already level up again. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> We're level 3 already. And now we can access a lot more skill. But what to pick? Hmm. Well, the other thing that some people seem to mention was something along the lines of focusing on armor and weapons so that I could use better stuff. So if we put a point on armor and proficiency, we will be able to equip better armor. And I think we're going to need that, in all truth. 
I think we're going to need some armor proficiency. Maybe not weapon proficiency per se, but definitely getting some better armor would be handy. I don't fancy going cloth. I mean, especially since I expect to do a lot of melee fighting in this game, even with my summon. So I think we'll put a point on this just so we can equip some better armor. Okay, looks like we can equip um, scale and chain armor and shields, which would be nice. So now we can finally equip some armor, which isn't just basic cloth. So we're about to upgrade our out a little bit. Can't use the scale helmet, but at least now we can equip the boots and the padded armor, which is which is nice. Gives a bit more defense. I'll just to live. I have a feeling this skeleton now is going to prove to be very useful. Essentially, tank all the damage for me, and I can just cast spells in the background or just completely not bother. So we have a wolf here. Wolf. I better also be able to actually keep the shield up. <laughs> I'm going to do a lot more active spell casting this time around, not just a case of spamming uh, lightning and when I feel like it. I have to be able to cast my Emanate dead when my ally dies, like now for instance. I have to be able to cast life drain if I'm a bit low on health. It's good to know I doesn't seem to do much other than smite, but hey, tanks. What more could a. Uh, a, a necromancer ask for, apart from maybe more than one of them, perhaps. Never have too many skeletons. I have, a, I think I like this. I'm going to be upgrading this all the way. I think I'm definitely going to put animate dead all the way to the, uh, the top. Hmm, just trying to get the left of the map. Looks like there is an area on the other side, so this could be quite a lengthy forest area, essentially. We'll have to see. Looks like we're being guarded by kobolds, wolves, and birds. The new enemies this time around. Not that any of these are really new. We dealt with kobolds pretty much for the entirety of Act 1 of Boulder's Gate. Ooh, it's kind of now he's pretty good at killing. He took that kobold. Oh, wow. He completely destroyed that one by himself. Yeah, could be useful. It could also be useful for the tactical front. He could take out uh, one of them and I could use him to basically plow in, take the aggro, and then just sneak in from behind and drain his life a little bit and smack him up. So yeah, I think this is definitely going to be a lot more interesting than the last playthrough to be honest, because there's just so much more I have to keep doing. Hmm, so that's going to give me a bit of a damage boost. Yep, it is. Well, it doesn't necessarily give us increased damage, it gives us a higher tier of damage since it's 3 to 4, basically meaning that it will only do now the highest possible damage, for the most part. We've got a chest here, Just a nice little stash of potions there and other items. <laughs> the scimitar looks a bit weird to be wielding. Not sure about that animation right there, but whatever. And now, thanks to this armor, I can sort of tank some of the skeletons, my uh, sorry, kobolds myself. So, we'll just pop a save here real quick. So, I've basically taken a list of all the suggestions I've received. Um, basically, Heteng recommended doing haste slash animate dead. Uh, Mateo Ukovic basically only suggested animate dead, even though he had no idea what hadn't played a Baldur's Gate game before. But I don't really mind. I mean, even if you've never played these games before, do feel free to give suggestions. I mean, that makes it more fun slightly, not knowing the game inside and out. Like, some of you are apparently quite familiar with this game, so... But it doesn't really matter whether you know it or not. Just stake your claim into whatever you think will be useful. Could make for... God, I can actually... I think I can hit my ally here, so I need to be careful. So, you know, don't be afraid just because you don't know anything about the game. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you pick so much in terms of if we screw up, we screw, if it's not what I deem is best, it doesn't matter. It's all about the choice of the people who watch these videos, not what I would personally pick. Can we, can we use this axe? I'm going to guess we can't. No, nope, it's probably a 200 weapon anyway. And I would prefer to have a shield, to be honest. More blasted birds. Is that a, should that a corpse or a bag or something? Blasted birds! Come get some! Don't have a look here. Oh, it's uh, ooh, it's oh, it's just a 
heart or something. What well, this zoomed in camera bit, I wish it would zoom in a bit more. <laughs> Doesn't seem to zoom in quite enough as I'd like. <laughs> Anyway, um, nice reviews, recommended melee slash armor build. He really liked the spell sword uh, combination I did in the last game, and I might do something similar here, but we'll just see how it goes. I might go, I might at least make myself decent at my own combat, because it seems like you're gonna, whether you like it or not, melee combat is gonna be unavoidable for your character in this game. But it's something I noticed with the first Arc Alliance, so although you can sort of go like ranged and all that, it does seem like inevitably you will have to use a melee weapon. And none so true in the final fight with Eldrith where... Um, did that say pick up gold? Huh. Do we actually have to pick up gold manually in this game? You just kind of run over it in the first one and I fought here too. Oh, just from the chest. Duh, I'm being stupid. Slight hangover, perhaps. Look at that. Tag team, skeleton, and me versus the wolf and Kobo. Wolfiness. Well, I already love this Aminate Dead. I might, I, even if I don't put any more points on it, I might just stick with this. One point. Although, I, I don't think I will. I'm going to probably have a shoddy ring. We can enchant that ring and make it actually useful. I'm hoping we can sort of enchant these normal rings and apply our own sort of buffs to it. You know, like, we get these rings with no uh, enchant on them and actually enchant them ourselves. That'd be kind of cool. It would make it would mean keeping stuff like the shoddy ring so that we can make it into something useful. Got a shoddy throwing axe there. How are we doing weight-wise? Ah, oh, we're doing pretty good. 87, about halfway through. Oh, and it looks like we'll be coming up to some kind of a village in a little bit, which will probably... Uh, Kira mentioned she would meet us in the village past here. You'd bring a little useful here. I like the forest around here, although it does remind me a little bit of one level in Path of Exile in Act 2, where you sort of go through a massive dark forest like this, but this one's a bit less dark ish. Well, somewhat. Anyway, continue to go through the uh, suggestions made by the. Uh, Commenters, uh, Alex the Average Kid recommend I should focus on life drain slash shield for now. Basically, my starting skills, and then go for armor and melee later on. Uh, I'll have to consider whether I want to upgrade the shield. Um, why might why, I think life drain might be good, but I'll have to see. I mean, I can see life drain being useful in the long run. I'm not 100% sold on the shield so much. It, it seems, seems to be very minor-ish. I mean, I'll take a look at it in a second. It's a 10% absorb. Oh, oh, it gives a plus to armor class. Ah, that could be the useful part. If it massively upgrades the armor class bit, it could be useful. But I'll pick it up at one of the scrap at this point. Throwing daggers? Throw them or... Oh, no. I just want to test this out. If I equip the shoddy throwing axe, is it... Oh, nice! We can actually use throwing weapons now. <laughs> if I wanted to go ranged. I might keep one of these, actually, just in case I decide to go ranged. But which one? Yeah, I'm going to keep this throwing axe, I think. It might be useful if I need a ranged... Ooh, what was that? One of the things was in yellow. Hmm. It seems like I haven't unequipped either of these, which is odd. I wonder if that means we can switch between weapons as well. Hmm. There's probably a way to there's probably a way to switch between weapons, I guess. I've heard about dual wielding and stuff, so I guess there's kind of a wow, another save point already. She was generous with the save points early on. Although this might be due to the difficulty of normal. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just being really generous at the early going because we're only in the second level of the game after all. So, you know. I don't need it. I'm going to take a look at that. It seems like there's a way to sort of change weapons, which could be very handy. It means I can sort of bust out my ranged weapon whenever I feel like it. I didn't actually know, but you could change between weapons. That's supposed to be the one thing I forgot to check in my, um, test run or whatever. 
I'll take, take, I'll take a look at that after this part. I'm going to do it now. It'll be a bit of awkward technical crap, which no one wants to see anymore of. Oh no, my skeleton has fallen. But at least he's durable. It's not like something I have to summon straight away. It seems to take a lot of hits. Maybe because I'm sort of contributed towards that myself. Who knows? Still more, but Dead Corpse Trail continues. Ooh, this looks a bit hairy. We might need to bait him out a little bit here, Mr. Skeleton. I wonder what I should call this guy. I mean, I should, should I give him a name at all? Should I name this skeleton something for now? Or should I just leave him as anonymous out minion type person? And this is a bit of a hairy situation here. Might have to be careful because they are doing a they do, do a fair amount of damage, these ranged uh, combatants, but Okay, you take one, I'll take the other. We'll use strategy. Take two each. Alright, looks like my skeleton's taken out one already. I took out and was just about taking out the other one pretty comfortably too. Take out nine gold. All kinds of weapons here. Ooh, what's that? What's that say? Uh, Oh, dagger there. Seems like the items are kind of hard to spot in this time around. They're not immediately obvious. I don't know if that's due to the stretched out graphics or anything, but I'm not noticing these items be that obvious this time around. I'll have to keep an eye out on the bottom of the screen a bit more. The cues. Ooh. More shoddy weather, aren't we? Oh, it's only a bit full now, so I want to be careful. Ooh, an upgrade. Oh wow, <laughs> despite the weather armor, it, for some reason on this guy, it only seems to cover the, doesn't cover his uh, nipples, which is hmm, interesting. I wonder if different, I wonder if different classes have different styles of armor on them, like maybe if you play as the cleric, that the armor sort of covers it all, and because it's a mage class, it doesn't cover so much here. Who knows, oh god, this is a bit of a, oh, this could get early, these melee, well, uh, maybe these melee gears are being distracted. We can take them out. Yes. Brilliant. Die, you scum. Oh, I need some health drain here. Oh, boy. This thing's some damage here. There we go. That's the ticket. Beautiful. All right. So, looks like we've cleared the forest. Ooh. Red Fang Goblin Lair. So, these weren't kobolds after all. These were goblins. I guess they are goblins, to be fair. They are green stuff, but I uh, couldn't really tell that much due to the uh, sort of... I guess I should have made a little bit of a distinction between them and the kobolds, but they act like kobolds, so that's what I called them. Uh, goblin lair. Ooh, this looks interesting. Looks like our adventures in the forest will continue. Um, and the other suggestions made in the comments were Walter Cuppen suggested summoning spells slash spell skills in general. So anything to do with spells, just basically go all spells, don't bother with melee combat, you know, focus on spell skills and all that. My random generation seems pretty good. To that side. And finally, Antonio13 suggested animate dead slash armor as well. So those are all the people who have chosen to make a comment. Oh, right. <laughs> I accidentally I went to switch the map up, but now I figured out how to do the uh, alternate attack. If you press right on the D-pad, you can switch between ranged and uh, two weapons. That's really nice. So you can not only s cast spells really easy now, you can also switch weapons whenever you want. Wow. I already like this game. So what more intuitive options? I'm just trying to check if there's anything I've missed. Oh, this is quite a short area, actually. I thought it'd be a bit longer than this, but I guess not. Alright, so that's the end of this part. Pretty short, but... Eh, I don't know this game, so I, I'm not really going to go through individual levels. Well, proceed on to other levels, because I don't know how big some of the areas will be. But maybe in future parts, if I sort of notice a pattern of levels being quite short, I might do two at a time. I'll see how I'll just play it by ear because as I said I don't know anything about this game compared to the original. So what did you think of the troll bark forest? Did you like the goblins, the wolves and the birds? Did you like the choice? Did you like Mr. Skeleton friend here? Do you think he was a useful ally that I can walk straight through? Or did you think he was a wasted skill pick? And do you have any more skill suggestions? Feel free to continue to 
suggest what I should put my points on throughout the playthrough. Because as with last time, it always changed quite a bit. Things change, you know. I might decide to go for a certain build and you might change your minds. And any other comments about the game? What do you think of the forest? Do you think it's a nice little brief level? And what's going to happen next time in the Red Fang Goblin Lair? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below as always. And I'll catch you all next time for part 3 of the playthrough.